Hi everyone, my name is Adefemi Michael. Uh, I'm a DevOps engineer at CCUB in Nigeria. Uh, and you can catch me on Twitter with the username that's uh, where most times I tweet about anything that has to do with infrastructure, uh, NFT, yeah, and also anything that has to do with Kubernetes as well, uh, which I've been finding interest in as of late. Uh, for today, I'll be speaking on uh, introduction to GCP with Terraform. Uh, which I termed as a quick crash course. Uh, so basically we'll be looking at what GCP is, uh, what GCP is offering, uh, which is the benefits of uh, using cloud uh, in your environment, benefits of cloud provider, uh, what Terraform is, how Terraform fits into the DevOps uh, culture. And also we'll be doing a quick demo, uh, spinning off something with Terraform on GCP of course. Uh, so what is GCP? Uh, so GCP is, uh, is a Google Cloud provider uh, that's the full meaning of GCP. Uh, so basically, uh, it allows you to deploy stuff uh, on on their end. So the, the we all know that the, the old way of doing stuff is we have some servers on premise, and then uh, we deploy whatever we want to deploy. We, we kind of like manage the servers ourselves on premise. Uh, we do the management, we do the upgrade, we do the updates of all the servers on premise. Now with GCP, uh, which is a cloud provider, what they are offering is bring your code to us. Uh, I will help you manage the, 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 the infrastructure. We help you manage where your, uh, your servers, where your code is running on. Uh, we help you do the updates. You don't have to worry about space. You don't have to worry about how much space you'll be consuming. You don't have to worry about uh, how much RAM you'll be consuming. Uh, all you just have to do is bring your code. Uh, we give you the bare metal you run your code on. Uh, so, and they also offer more than uh, just giving you an infrastructure, more than just giving you bare metal. They also offer something called uh, uh, infrastructure as a service, uh, which is IES, which was the one I just explained. Uh, they offer what we call platform as a service. Uh, they also offer something called uh, software as a service. So we must have interacted with uh, Gmail. Uh, we must have interacted with G Suite. Those are some of their products that has to do with software as a service. Uh, so yeah, these are I listed some uh, some resources that you can actually find in find in GCP. Uh, as you can see, I listed uh, the compute, uh, which is uh, which is more or less like a, which is a virtual machine, uh, literally a virtual machine. We have storage and database, uh, which comprises of a lot of database, uh, both both SQL and non-SQL database. We have networking. Of course, your compute might be needing to speak with your database, probably in a private VPC or in a public VPC, uh, depending on how you actually want to structure. Oh, sorry, in a private subnet or in a pub public subnet, depending on how you want to structure your uh, the way your compute interacts with your database or the way your, the way your resources interact with each other. Also, they offer big data. They are very, very heavy on big data. They offer developer tools, uh, identity and security for managing, uh, for securing your resources on, on, the, on the cloud. They offer internet of things. They offer cloud AI management tools and data transfer. These are like, I just picked a few points from what GC, uh, GCP offers. They offer quite a lot, a lot of, of resources. Uh, moving on. Uh, so yeah, benefits of using uh, cloud provider offerings. Uh, so the scalability, of course, you'll be able to both scale in horizontal scaling and also do vertical scaling as well. Uh, there is availability. These resources, are, uh, the resources you are deploying on on on, cloud, on on GCP is not just in a particular location. You can do a multi-region deployment. Uh, you can do a multi-easy deployment, uh, which is availability zone deployment. You can also do a multi-region deployment. Basically, you are deploying in more than one region. Uh, that makes that particular, uh, what you are trying to deploy, that makes it available. And there's also elasticity as well. Uh, so IAC, infrastructure as code. Uh, infrastructure as code, uh, just say you have, uh, you have these resources that you want to deploy. Uh, but you don't want to go via the console. Uh, when I mean the console, I will show you that once I'm doing my demo. Uh, so you don't want to go via the console to deploy these resources because of time. Uh, you want to manage time. You want to manage. You want to. You want to be consistent with what you're doing. IAC helps you do that, which is infrastructure as code. Basically, it means you are deploying most of your resources to that particular infrastructure by writing code. You don't have to go through uh, any sort of any sort of uh, uh, press and play on the console to get your infrastructure deployed. And I said, what are some of the IAC best practices? Uh, these are more or less like the advantages of using IAC. We have speed, of course. 
because you are writing your infrastructure, you are deploying your resources to your infrastructure via code, definitely there is high tendency of speed. And sometimes your code might be reusable. So you don't have to like, uh, you don't have to like recreate the wheel. All you just have to do is plug, uh, copy from what you've written before, uh, paste, make some changes, and then deploy. Uh, there's also consistency. Because what you are deploying, you uh, what you are deploying to to your to your cloud resources will be consistent in the sense that uh, if you deploy something today and you are trying to deploy it uh, maybe in a week's time or two weeks time, definitely there will be consistency in what you are deploying. And there is there's also diverse integrations. These diverse integrations means you can easily plug uh, a particular IEC tool to deploy to. You can use a an IEC tool to deploy to both GCP. You can use that same tool to deploy to uh, AWS. You can use it to deploy to Oracle uh, or even Terraform Cloud as well. So that's what diverse integrations that uh, is referring to here. Uh, yeah. So one of the most popular IEC tool we have out there is Terraform. Of course, uh, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan of Terraform. Uh, I've actually been using Terraform for the past three years now, uh, but using it for my own personal projects and also using it for uh, external project as well. And in my company as well, we are very, very heavy on Terraform. Uh, I listed some of the companies that actually use GCP in Nigeria. Some of the companies that use, we have a lot of companies that use GCP in Nigeria. We have, uh, we have CCO, uh, we have Team Apt, uh, and also Terraform as well. Some of the companies that use Terraform in Nigeria, CCO, which is the company I work for, Team Apt uses Terraform. Uh, we have uh, some top companies as well, uh, which, uh, some, uh, I think Nautilus Technologies as well use, uses Terraform. So the tool is not just new in Africa, it's not just new in Nigeria, it's a tool that people are getting conversant with, people are uh, knowing that, okay, this tool is actually used for deploying infrastructure, for, for uh, creating infrastructure, and it's fast and easy to know. If you have a basic understanding of programming language, of course, you can easily pick up this tool and use it. And uh, the sweetest part about this tool is the for loop. Uh, and also using the ternary operations. It's a very, very easy tool to use. Uh, so yeah, I did it. I placed the diagram here that shows the DevOps circle. Uh, so basically these are some DevOps jargons uh, that you'll be seeing out there. Of course, almost all these tools, uh, it's not necessary for you to know them. Uh, but if you look uh, at the top, top right, uh, you will see Terraform in there as well. So definitely for deployment uh, in the CI/CD pipeline, there is a place for Terraform. Uh, so basically, for for deploying your for deploying to infrastructures, of course you use Terraform. For managing your infrastructures as well, you use Terraform. Uh, yeah, there is Ansible, uh, but Terraform does this management for you very, 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 very well and quite easy. Uh, so yeah, let's do some demo. So yeah, for the demo, I've written some code prior before now. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm creating a resource, a Google Compute instance. Uh, I'm using variable to actually pass in my name, variable in the sense that I'm not giving it a generic name. The name will be passed in variables.tf. Uh, also, the host name as well. I'm grabbing my current project configuration from this data resource that I created. So with data resource, you can actually use it to grab uh, if you have uh, a, an already created resource, you can use data resource to grab that already created resource, which is what I'm trying to do here. I'm using to be able to also declare the zone in which I want that uh, that instance to be deployed in, uh, that's the virtual machine to be deployed in, and also the type of virtual machine I'm using. Uh, this place, I'm passing metadata. Uh, basically, I'm trying to, you can see change me here. Of course, I'll be pushing this code to, to, uh, to GitHub if anyone wants to clone it and probably try it on their end. At this point, I'm creating a public key uh, called ID IS8 underscore AZ, which is going to be stored uh, in my in my own path, in my in my own directory. Uh, also, yeah, I'm calling in a startup script. Startup script in the sense that I want a script to be to be run once I start up my instance. Uh, this place is the networking part that I talk that I told you about. I told you with uh, with deploying things to to if, uh, to any cloud provider, you have to also take care of your networking. Uh, maybe you want it to be open to the public or you want it to be, to be, to be private. Uh, so at, it's at this part, I'm, do, uh, I'm doing all those stuff, uh, doing the networking here, creating my subnet, the subnet for the project, which as you can see, I'm grabbing it from the data resource I created here, and also uh, the network IP. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I'm trying to uh, make sure that this resource I'm creating, which is my uh, Google Compute instance, this VM I'm creating, won't start unless all this this particular data resource has grabbed whatever needs to be grabbed. Uh, so which is why I'm putting a depend on variable here. So when you see a depend on variable, that means this particular application is depending on a particular, this particular resource, sorry, is depending on in another particular resource. Uh, and at this point, I put in a boot disk. Uh, of course, if you are deploying stuff to, to GCP, you'll be familiar with almost all these terms that I'm using. Of course, you have to add a boot disk. And with this boot disk, I'm actually using Debian, Debian Cloud, Debian 9. Uh, you'll see it in my, in my variables.tf. Uh, also, I'm owning an on host maintenance and I'm doing automatic restarts to be true. Uh, of course, your, your resources you need to be deployed in a particular service account. Uh, so I'm putting in the scope here and I'm tagging my, my resource, giving it web server name, just so uh, say for instance, I want to, I want to uh, manage my resource. I can know that by these tags, I can find this particular resource. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm creating a compute address. Uh, uh, that's an internal reserve subnet IP, uh, which is, I'm reserving a static internal IP address for my compute. Uh, giving it uh, the region in which it will be deployed to, uh, the address, the address type, which is internal, and also connecting it to Google, uh, to this particular resource called Terra, uh, Terra Sub. And if you look down, uh, if I scroll down, you'll see the resource being created here. So this one is actually optional. So if you are creating your own service account yourself, of course, you can also do that. Uh, but not forgetting, you need to uh, create some IAM admin role and assign it to this place. Uh, but this can be removed. Or if you want to go ahead and, and create that for yourself, you can do that as well. Uh, at this place, I'm creating the compute network. Uh, I'm creating the VPC. Uh, at this place, I'm creating the subnet. Of course, if you look up here, you will see I'm attaching the subnetwork to my compute address. Uh, so it's at, it is at this place I'm creating the, the subnetwork, uh, giving it a CIDR range, uh, the region in which it will be deployed to, connecting it to the VPC which I created up here. Uh, and I said this is a custom subnet. Uh, of course, it can be changed. Uh, the aggregation interval, which this is the log config, the flowing sample, and also the metadata as well. And as you can see here, I'm giving it some secondary IP range, uh, the range name. Uh, this is a this name can be changed, and also this side range can be changed as well to anything of your, cho of your choosing. And at this place, I'm creating the firewall. Of course, I want to open some ports because I'm deploying a particular application to this, uh, to my instance. So I want to have some ports open, like 80, uh, to allow me to reach out to HTTP, uh, 22, to allow me SSH into my instance, 443, to allow me uh, for HTTPS, and 3389, this is just a, a, a random port actually for the application I'm deploying. And then I'm making sure it is open to the public and I'm giving it a tag as well, which is web server because it's the tag I've been using from, uh, from above. Uh, this one are actually output. Uh, basically, I want to see the, uh, the project of, the, of what I created up here, which is for this uh, data resource, uh, which is what I'm doing down there. Uh, let's go to uh, provider output. So with output here, you can get your VPC name, you can get your subnet name, you can get your subnet ID, these are easy uh, when you visit uh, uh, Google, uh, let's do Terraform, Google uh, Computes. So the Terraform, the Terraform documentation is quite, is quite easy and very, very good to understand. So if you check, if you check attribute reference, these are some of the attributes you can get out. Instance ID, the metadata, the self link, the tags, the label point, the CPU platform. And also if you check argue, argument reference, these are some of the arguments you can pass in. And they have some very, very easy to use plug and play example usage that you can, uh, that you can easily plug to your account. As you can see, they are creating a service account here. Uh, and as you can see, they are creating the compute instance, just like what I'm doing, the zone, the machine type and so on. Uh, so let's go to provider.tf. Of course, before you deploy a particular resource, uh, Terraform needs to know the provider that is actually using that resource. It's easy for us to say, okay, this is the provider I want, but of course you want to specify the project. Of course, if you are familiar with GCP, you will know that with GCP, GCP works with anything that, uh, GCP works with projects. Uh, so you have to actually deploy your resource or your application to a particular project. So which is why I'm specifying the project here in my provider and specifying the region in which I want my resource deployed into and also the zone. 
Uh, if you look at my variables of TF, this is where I'm passing in all the values. Of course, you can see the project I'm passing in this, uh, this project name, which I grabbed from here, the project ID, sorry, which I grabbed from here. And then I'm passing in the region, uh, the zone, the name I want to give to my VPC, uh, the side range. And if you look down here, you'll see where I'm passing in the, uh, the private IP. Uh, the script that I want to be installed, I'll show you the script very soon. Uh, you will see where I'm passing in the disk size, this VM type, and I'm also passing the OS. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu. Uh, this can be updated. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu 2004, of course, it can be updated to the latest version. Uh, yeah. So for the user data, if you look here, uh, this is what I want to be. You know, in my main.tf, I mentioned on uh, the script as a startup script, yeah, in my main.tf, and I call it variable.user data. And if you look at my user data variable here, uh, you see my user data variable is actually referencing a file in a folder. And this is the file, the shell, the shell uh, bash file is referencing in this folder. So basically it's a, it's a shell script uh, that does some, that echo script started into this script log. Uh, use a variable cut file uh, to pass in this particular. So basically what I'm doing here is just a simple HTML file. Uh, such that when I run Terraform apply or Terraform plan, uh, Terraform apply, you will see this this displayed, and then I'm also passing in uh, a YouTube a YouTube video, of course, a very funny YouTube video. And then uh, at this point, I'm installing Nginx uh, because I'll be using Nginx as my web server. I'm allowing Nginx HTTP. I'm enabling Nginx. Uh, displaying the status of, status of Nginx, and at this place, basically, I'm just copying this file uh, which I created here. As you can see, I'm copying it into this particular part because Nginx will be reading from that part. So I'm copying it from this particular part. Uh, and yeah, that's that for our application. So uh, Terraform has some inbuilt command. If you look at my screen here, I did the Terraform format. Uh, basically, if I if I do this, uh, say for instance, I do this, uh, I'm trying to create a wrong format right now. And then I run, and then I save this file. Uh, if I run Terraform FMT to format my file, it's actually going to format it. As, as you can see, it has formatted the file. Uh, and also, there's also something called Terraform to uh, to The first step you do when you want to apply your configuration to Terraform is to initialize that particular uh, that particular Terraform configuration by running Terraform Terraform init. So Terraform init will grab. I uh, will look at your provider file. Uh, know that okay. This is a GC, this is a Google a Google project. As you can see, it's going to grab the latest version of Ashcop Google. Grab that. Uh, tell you oh, this has been successfully initialized. And one thing I do do uh, that you might as as a, as a Terraform user is I use Terraform validate a lot uh, to check if my configurations are correct. So when I run Terraform validate, I can check if my configurations are correct. If it's correct, it's going to it's going to tell me success. Uh, so but basically, this is not checking your code. Uh, this is not checking your your what you are deploying to the to, to the web server uh, to the to GCP. No, what is just checking is it's checking your code format to see. Okay, I'm expecting a string here. Yeah? Am I seeing a string? I'm expecting a number here. Yeah? Am I seeing a number? So let me give you an a quick example. So say this I put two here yeah? instead of Terraform VM I put two and uh, let's save this. Let me run Terraform validate again. Uh, okay. Uh, let me put a type here. Yeah? Type type a string, yeah, but I put two. Let me on Terraform validate now. Uh, scratch that. Uh, let's see, default is, oh, let's say I put Boolean here, let's see. Uh, sorry, default is true. Uh, no. Let's see, I put this. Uh, I'm trying to create an issue, yeah, exactly. So as you can see, Terraform validate is telling me the default value is not compatible with the variable type. So the variable type it is expecting is what is a string, but I'm putting in uh, a list which is not compatible, uh, which is why Terraform validate is very good. So like I said, it's just checking in, it's just checking your variables to the type of variable you are using and uh, the, the value you are passing to your variable. That's just what it's checking. It's not like it's checking the code that you are deploying. Uh, it's not like it's checking what you are deploying to to GCP to your to the cloud provider. Uh, let me do a control Z and go back to where I was coming from. Uh, yep. So let me run the Terraform format uh, and 
then the Terraform validates. Uh, I've run Terraform in it, so let me run Terraform plan. Of course, I've passed in my default value here, as you can see, so I don't have to specify, maybe I'm using a TF as far, uh, but this is, uh, you can use TF as far to actually pass in your values and you can pass in it via default. Uh, I'll show you that in this time. So yeah, as you can see, these are what will be created when we want Terraform apply. So it's telling you Terraform will perform the following actions. We create a compute uh, address. Uh, this is the address, the address type, the creation timestamp. We have the firewall as well will be created. Uh, as you can see, this is the priority. This is the network. Uh, this is the project in which the address will be created into, the source range, uh, and the ports that will be allowed, the type of uh, the protocol, which is TCP. It's going to be creating the compute instance, as you can see, uh, uh, E2 micro. Uh, this is the metadata, the script is going to be passing in. Of course, this is the, as you can see, the key is saved here locally on my system. Uh, this is the script that will be passed in. Uh, uh yeah and this is the zone in which it depends so basically the terraform plan just show you what you are going to deploy before you before you want terraform apply uh yeah so let's do a terraform apply and see our configuration what terraform can apply uh, so it's going to ask me of course terraform plan create a terraform state for you uh definitely you won't see anything here until i want terraform apply I uh, create a Terraform state lock file for you. Basically, this is just uh, for state locking. And then it creates this uh, Terraform folder for you. This one downloads the provider that you are using, actually, this dot Terraform part. Uh, so uh, putting a yes here, because I want to accept these configurations. So yeah, we will watch our compute uh, get created now. Uh, uh, creating network, create. Disable, enable it. Oh, so I have to enable this and then make a retry. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let's enable this and then make a retry for that project. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'll wait for this to load. Enable. I'm actually I'm actually meant to enable Compute Engine API. So. Uh, Enable shouldn't be let's see and then we be there. Uh okay, let's activate this. So enable. Uh let's see, let's see, let's see what's going on. Uh, number building uh, computer engine API. This should be enabled by another. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, okay. It should probably create. Uh, and without enabling that, we actually can't push, we can't run these configurations. Uh, so, Oh, sorry about that. I have to put in my card details uh, to make sure I have all this set. And as you can see, my computer engine right now is enabled. Uh, so let me run the Terraform apply again. So yeah, it's good that I'm facing errors. <laughs> you can all see that in action. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see if I have any errors I have to deal with. Uh, this is done. Uh, Created that okay, yep. So it's creating it as you can see. It's creating the uh, the network, creating the firewall hand in hand, uh, creating it in this particular project. Uh, as you can see, the VPC has been created, uh, and we can confirm that. Uh, can so can confirm that. Yeah, let's check network. Let's see. Uh, uh, let's look down, 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 down. Uh, yep, there's it. As you can see, there are VPC. 
And as you can see, it created the subnet. You can see the side ranges here as well. So yeah, like I said, I told you uh, after running Terraform apply, as you can see, it says five added, zero change, zero destroyed. And it did what? It gave us this, uh, the subnet, uh, the subnet cider, the name of the subnet, uh, SSH to this particular place. Uh, this is the IP of my instance, uh, the port that has been opened, the protocol. Uh, these are actually the outputs and you can easily visit here uh to see what we deployed so let's see this thing uh make a video uh the series in it uh go to my instance computes computes engine oh i'll need to register that domain i see that's what's going on that domain is not registered so that will actually pose some issues. Uh, but let's see, let's see. Uh, let me grab this IP. Let me use this IP. The public IP. And I think this should work out just fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, I need to change this. <laughs> so yeah, let's just do that. Let's do that right now. Let me make these changes and say welcome to Ashitok Africa and then save the file. This will talk about the consistency I was referring to when it comes to deploying to Terraform resources. And as you can see, I just added a, a, a little snippet of Ashitok Africa for last year. So uh, let me make these changes in my install.sh. Uh, as you can see, I'm meant to, this is meant to be in, uh, welcome to the first. Uh, so this should be welcome to, uh, Ashitok Africa. Let me just grab this here and proceed. Welcome to welcome to Ashitok uh, Ashitok Africa. Control C. Let's do a Terraform apply and let's see if we have any changes there. Uh, Terraform apply. Uh, while we are waiting for that to apply. Uh, Yep, oh, never mind. Sorry. I just, it just, yeah, that's some of the things you can do. Okay, yeah, it's applying the configuration. It's saying you want to change. Uh, let's type in a yes. Uh, so this will actually allow us to to install this. So let me pause the video and come back once it's done. So, uh, this is done. Uh, so let's see our latest changes. Let me grab the IP. Uh, okay. Uh, two five three point eleven. Let's see how it has changes. If so, that didn't work. So what we could do is we could do a terraform. Uh, terraform destroy. So I'll just be passing in the flag to make it fast. And then we'll do a terraform apply. So this way you actually destroy all the resources that you have created, and then we'll do a terraform apply. Uh, uh then uh let's come back when this is done okay so yeah the resources have been destroyed uh and now let's do a uh, let's do an apply a terraform apply i'll just be using the auto approve command as well to apply these resources uh, yeah so i'll be putting in that's what's going to be applying by itself automatically uh and let's see what happens here uh, let's come back once this is done, okay? So, yeah. Uh, so, we have, uh, yeah. So, we have all uh, resources created now. Uh, so, let me just grab the public IP and see if we have any changes. Hmm. Uh, let's see if we have any changes here. Yep, and there we have it. So we have our changes. Welcome to Ashitok Africa. Uh, Ashitok, this is a YouTube video, uh, and nothing more. So yeah, that's a simple, uh, simple demo. I'll be pushing this code to GitHub. Uh, 
sharing the link, uh, you can have access to it. Uh, don't forget to uh, to attend some of our meetups. We have some. Uh, we have Lagos Ashi Cup group uh, that you can attend, that you can join. Uh, also, I think the, the 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 organizers will be sharing some of the meetup link with with all the attendees. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming, and thank you for listening. Uh, bye.